Welcome to today's deep dive on setting and enforcing boundaries. My name is Jose Robles, and I'm dual trained as a rapid transformational coach and a rapid transformational therapist. I've been working with clients for the past two, two and a half years or so under topics such as OCD, addictions, money blocks, anxiety, depression, insomnia, and even just mindset shifts. Now, a common thread between a lot of these issues is setting boundaries. Most people don't really understand what boundaries are, so most people don't understand when their boundaries are being violated and how they're supposed to react or handle when their boundaries are violated. Today, we're going to be taking a deep dive into setting and enforcing boundaries. What is a boundary? A boundary is simply a layer of protection that you put around yourself physically or mentally and or mentally because it can be both. Now, this word is used in so many different places and so many different areas that it's easy to misconstrue what a boundary really is. I think it helps give some space for a reaction time. Now, that reaction time could be anything. It could be a physical reaction. It could be a mental reaction or a verbal reaction. It could be anything. But again, to put it simply, a boundary is just a layer of protection that we place around our body, our mind, our feelings to give us time to react how we would like to react and to protect our inner peace. The impact of boundaries are so vital to us as human beings because we crave understanding, we crave familiarity. If we know what's happening, our minds are at peace, our mind is calm. However, if we start being attacked verbally or even physically or slandered on the internet or, or it could be anything, with a boundary in place, you give your mind and spirit enough time to react the way you would like to, to react the way the best version of you would like to react. Well, if you weren't taught boundaries as a kid and if you weren't taught self-worth, then it is going to be more difficult for you to understand this concept and even more difficult for you to implement this in your life. Boundaries is another way you show yourself how much you mean to yourself. By setting boundaries, you're saying, I deserve to be protected. I deserve to be prepared for what's out there. And this is how I'm going to do it. By setting boundaries, you're telling yourself that you matter, that you are important. Now that could even be telling somebody, I don't like to be spoken to that way. It feels like you may be pushing them away from you and almost you going on the offense, and you are. But what you're simultaneously doing is going on defense, saying, I'm setting up a perimeter or a boundary, and if they violate that, then I'm going to have to react in a different way. Most people are uncomfortable with this feeling because they don't want to offend people. I grew up as a people pleaser most of my life. And I can tell you, it was difficult for me to set boundaries because I always thought other people knew what was best for me. So of course, I'm going to listen to them. Of course, I want their feedback. Of course, I want their input. Well, this created a lot of problems in my adult life because I then had to relearn my self-worth. I couldn't keep gauging my worth based on other people's opinions of me. That took a lot of hard work and a lot of boundary setting but it's possible for you to do the same thing. Here's how. How can I discover my self-worth? Discover your self-worth by discovering how awesome you are. Of course, you made mistakes in your life. And of course, you may not be where you want to end up in life. That's totally fine. But right now, you're here in this class, which tells me, you care enough about yourself to learn a new skill. 
which is setting boundaries, which means you value yourself, you value your space, you value your inner peace. And that's what this is about. Small steps, small actions towards learning how to best appreciate yourself and how to set boundaries. Self-worth may be tricky. It was something that I've definitely struggled with in my life. The way I had to overcome my lack of self-worth was I realized, what is my identity? What is my identity being attached to? Now, I'm a father, a husband. I have a coaching business. I have children's books out there. Um, I am a veteran. I am a W-2 employee. I am a son, a brother, a friend, a colleague, a peer, a study. I'm many things, a speaker. Those are just labels. Those are titles that we inherit as we go throughout life. I mean, just being born into this world, you're already being branded with something, a son, a daughter, a brother, a sister, a cousin, a grandson, a grand, it could be anything. When we think about what our identities are attached to, the many roles we're given in life, it's easy for us to think about how am I supposed to act in the capacity of that role? Self-worth, then naturally what comes with it is the things that you are expected to behave or expected to perform. You're not just somebody's friend. You're not just somebody's spouse. You're not just somebody's daughter. You're not just a mother. You're not just a, we are so much more. We're human. We have potential. We have thoughts. We have dreams. We have ambitions. We have so much value to give. Disclaimer, I'm not saying don't perform as a husband, a mother, a spouse, a daughter, a son. That doesn't excuse those roles. What I'm saying is begin to separate yourself from those identities just enough for you to see where you are gathering your sense of worth. If you take pride in being a father or a mother, then be the best mother or father you can absolutely be, of course. If you love being a friend, if you love being a colleague, do it to the best of your ability. Now, when something happens to that role, when you're challenged in that role, when life throws you its obstacles, naturally, you're supposed to go through problems. That's how we grow. But when life throws you obstacles, don't allow those obstacles to knock you out of that identity. No, 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 no. That's one aspect of your being. A great visualization that I used with one of my clients who was suffering from the same thing. She was spread so thin, occupying all these roles. It came back to, how do you view yourself? Who are you? Oh, well, I'm a, and then she went through the laundry list of listing all of her labels. And I said, but who are you? We stopped and this great visualization exercise came up. I'm not going to do it here, but what we talked about was imagining her as an essence, as this liquid. We described all types of colors for each role that she possessed. There was a color for her uh, motherhood. There was a color for her being a spouse, a friend, a colleague, a coach, a podcaster. We imagined all that. Then we poured all those colors into a pitcher. And then we poured those colors into these different cups. And I said, what's left of you? She said, not much, just a little bit at the bottom. I said, that little bit at the bottom, can you achieve your best life with that little bit at the bottom? And she said, no way, no way, Jose. <laughs> and I said, okay, let's pour it all back into the pitcher. Let's shake it all up, blend the colors naturally. What colors are showing up? And she came up with this beautiful, like, rainbow fusion there's colors moving there was lights there was just glowing it was this remarkable visualization and i wish i could have recorded it but that brought out this sense of oh my god i am me and i pour myself into these roles and that's what i want you to see is you pour yourself into these different roles which you then think gives you a version of worth for yourself it doesn't have to be that way you are you and you set boundaries in these roles in order to protect yourself to be poured back into yourself and not spilled out on the countertops. 
So an exercise I'd like for you to do, I'd like for you to write down all the labels that you're branded with. Mother, father, brother, sister, spouse, grandparent, coworker. Um, are you the funny person at work? Are you the silly one? Are you the one that people come to when they need to talk? Do people only come to you to borrow money because you have it? Do whatever it is, all the labels that you feel are associated with you. Write them down on a piece of paper. And yes, after you have all those roles, I'd like you to place a color on each of those things, any color that you feel is appropriate. Do your best not to repeat the colors. If you have to repeat the colors, blend it, a red and a green. Then you use that color and you do that for any remainder uh, of the labels. After you have that, I want you to close your eyes, take two to three minutes and pour yourself out. Pour yourself into all those different cups like we did with my client and see how much left of you is there. Ask yourself, how does this feel? Can I be my best self with this amount left? I don't think so. Now take all those cups, pour it back into the pitcher, swirl it all up, shake it up and see what is this new color, this new version of you. That is your essence. That is just you, but the perfect version of you. How do we set these boundaries? First of all, we need to figure out what is a violation of our boundaries or what is a problem that we perceive that we have and why can't anyone else see it? If no one sees your boundaries or knows they're there, then they don't know they're there. They're going to keep violating them most of the time by mistake. I think people naturally are not malicious. I think people do want to see the best in everyone. I'm an optimistic. That's what I believe. But I believe the good in mankind. So if people are naturally violating your boundaries or intentionally violating your boundaries, then you need to get very clear on how they're violating your boundaries. So ask yourself, what triggers you? What bothers you? What is something that someone says or does that breaks you out of your inner peace and places you in a state of reaction? I have to get them back. I can't believe they said that. Now I'm insecure about that. They should know I'm insecure about that. What if they don't? What if they do, but they're still trying to hurt you? Are you being loud? Are you being clear? Are you laughing it off? Are you saying, oh, no big deal? And then when you go home that night, you think that was a big deal. I should have said something. Find out what triggers you. Write it down. Take the time to ask yourself, when someone says this, I feel this. That's going to give you a very clear picture on where you should begin setting your boundaries. Perfect. Now that you wrote those things down, I want you to ask yourself, after I'm triggered, after I'm being placed in a state of reaction, how does it impact my life? What am I being prevented from doing when I'm in this state of mind? When somebody violates my boundaries, how do I then show up in life? Are you angry? Are you sad? Are you insecure? Can you be the best parent if you're feeling insecure? Can you show up at your job as a, as a project manager, as a, as a salesperson, a saleswoman? Or are you an author? And because you saw book reviews that weren't up to your liking, now you say, oh, maybe I should just go back to X, Y, or Z, right? Ask yourself, how do you then act in your life? Sad, mad, angry, lethargic start procrastinating more. Maybe you want to shy away from the spotlight. Figure out how you are impacted. It doesn't matter, good or bad. How are you impacted after those things are said? And that version of you, is that the best version of you? I'm one of those people, when I take criticism, I like to work harder, right? That's me. But I had to set that boundary within myself because sometimes it's not healthy. It's not healthy for me just to kick on and start moving as fast as I can. That's letting other people control me. That's not who I am. I'm so much more. I can't let people be the, my motivators. I have to motivate myself. That was a boundary I set with me. Awesome. So now that you have what triggers you, how it's impacting you, it's time to actually set those boundaries. 
figure out exactly what you need to say or do in order to protect yourself. The goal here is inner peace. The goal here is you choosing how you show up in your life. If other people can rattle you and dictate how they want you to act in a situation or an environment, then you're not setting the proper boundaries. Protect yourself by a sentence. I don't like it when you do this. Simple. As you progress throughout this process of setting boundaries, you're going to realize it's not just boundaries that other people have to respect. Boundaries can also be set within yourself. Early on in my coaching journey, I had a client and we enjoyed working together. It was a blast. We had a lot of fun, made a lot of progress. I created a transformational bespoke recording for her. So then affirmational type recording that allowed her to free her from a lot of the limitations that we were working on. She sent me some feedback saying how wonderful it was, how inspiring and the words I used and <clears throat> um, the, the eloquence and, and the tonality, it was all just perfect. Well, early on in my coaching journey, that totally inflated my head. Here I'm thinking I'm God's gift to, to transformational recordings and affirmational recordings and, oh, this is my calling in life. I let it go to my head. I worked with another client uh, the next week or two weeks after that feedback, after my head's blown up. And this client wasn't very um, visually inclined. That wasn't a sense that they really, uh, that permeated their mind. I was using the same cues, the same tonality, the same descriptive words I would use, the same everything, same flow, but it didn't land with that client because they're just different. People are different. And we as coaches and therapists have to respond to our clients' needs, not what we're good at. So my client, I asked them, how was that transformational recording, right? Patting myself on the back. It wasn't good, Jose. I didn't appreciate this. I thought this was too loud. I thought this was too much. I didn't set boundaries with myself. I let my clients dictate the type of coach and therapist I was showing up as. With compliments, I skyrocketed. With critique, I plummeted. That's not who I am today. I realized it's not about setting boundaries for other people to respect. I had to set boundaries within myself for me to respect as my baseline. That way, I always show up with my client's needs as the predominant focus. I feel good about the coach that I am, and I feel good about the therapy services that I provide. All right, now it's time to enforce these boundaries. After you come up with these little sentences and these little practices of, no, I don't like that. I choose not to partake in this you need to enforce these boundaries. And this is one of the challenging things because if you're a people pleaser like I was, then you're always gonna wanna make people happy and it's gonna hurt you when you have to enforce a boundary. But remember, setting boundaries is about expressing self-love. Through self-love, you can perform and show up the best of your ability. So enforce those boundaries by being consistent, yes. <laughs> Consistency is key. Consistency is also difficult. Like I said, you're going to be going through this process that never ends. Let me tell you, it doesn't end with one sentence. It doesn't end with one correction. It's going to be a boundary for as long as you enforce it. So, how, do I, how would I stop enforcing my boundary? You'd stop correcting people. You let people get away with those sly remarks. You let people start poking at you. You let people start um, uh, misconstruing your words. You let people get away with, oh yeah, so, sorry about that, whatever. That's not okay. Your boundary is only a boundary as long as it's enforced. Now, like I said, this is going to be difficult, but the only way for you to find success in setting boundaries, especially during the holidays, is going to be consistency. 
calm actions, easy phrases. Hey, I actually don't like that. Hey, can we change the subject? I don't feel comfortable speaking about this. I think that's wonderful you chose to do that, but that's not something that I do anymore. That's not something I have, I'm about. Uh, I've actually changed. I actually don't appreciate that. It could be anything that you use that can be expressed. Now, it's not just verbal. It has to be physical as well. Violence is not the key. That's not what I'm saying. Start knocking people out. Um, your body language is going to say so much. If, and I, I tell this to my kids all the time, um, when they're playing rough, they say, oh, well, he said I could hit him. No, he didn't say you can hit him. Yeah, he did because he hit me back and then he kind of smiled and he ran away. Well, that's not him saying you can hit him. Yeah, he did. No. So the key with body language is to let people know you're not feeling comfortable, right? Body language. My chest is out. It's open. I'm telling you, I, I'm here for you. I'm looking at the camera. I'm receptive to you. It's different, right? If people start acting towards you in a way that you don't like, use your body language to let them know this is not right, okay? Don't let people take you out of this. If you're feeling down and that's a boundary you're setting, you want to feel your feelings, be down. Allow yourself to feel whatever it is you feel. They start, po hey, my face, I'm not smiling. I'm not, I'm not enthusiastic right now. My, my tone's dropping. I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of just here right now. People will see that. People will pick up on that kind of stuff. And when they do, let them know. Yeah, I mean, you know, we talked about this last week. I told you I don't like when you say this or do this and it's still being done. You know, I, I thought we moved past this. Give them a chance to receive that. Like I said, I don't believe most people uh, will openly try to violate your boundaries. I work, believe me, I work with clients. I know there are family members like that, that will do it intentionally, overtly. Absolutely. I've seen that and I worked with that. What I'm saying is give people the chance to correct themselves. You are protecting your inner peace by doing this. If you think you can go out and start changing people, well, that's a boundary you're going to need to set within yourself. Okay. So make sure you give people the chance to receive what you're saying. And then you know, if they are still choosing to violate that boundary, the next course of action is going to have to be to remove yourself from that situation, whatever that takes. Now, that boundary setting is powerful. It's challenging. It's tough. But the more you do it, the more you enforce it, the more you're expressing self-love and self-worth. Awesome. So we went through a bunch of fun facts, fun tips on how to set and enforce your boundaries. A great way to keep this alive in your life is to keep asking yourself these questions. What triggers me? What am I impacted by? What do I like? What do I not like? How do I want to show up the best version of me in all of life, in all the roles that I have? Please make sure you follow me on Roblest 101 on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, where I just put up a ton of content on how to be the best version of yourself. I'm here to create and to inspire, and I hope that this deep dive has helped you figure out more about what boundaries are, how to set them, how to identify your boundaries, and then how to enforce those boundaries. So this is just to best prepare you for those types of conversations, but also to express your value with yourself. Your self-worth is, is dictated based on the boundaries you enforce. So thank you so much for showing up to this deep dive. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Take care.